you were talking at the beginning a bit about which I'd like to discuss a bit more with you just a little bit about your own wellness strategies that you were saying you found meditation yeah. and what what have you found obviously you're on the Wim Hof which we watched and we loved you yeah. on. um so tell us a bit about that and are you doing the cold water swimming have you got a cold water tank because that's what I want to get so I've got an ice bath in the Cotswolds, which an, an ice bath and sauna set up from the ice bath company. They basically, they actually got in touch with me after the Wim Hof thing. And that, by complete magical something, was all delivered the weekend before the retreat. So it kind of, it was, it all tied in quite beautifully. Um, so I wouldn't say that I'm using it daily, but I do, I have an ordinary shower daily and then again, I crank to the very coldest and do a, at least 30 seconds in that, just breathing. I am obsessed with the sauna. I'm obsessed at the moment with sauna because I found out that 51, you, you drop, you can, if you have four saunas a week, lower your chances by 51% of a heart attack, a heart attack or a stroke, which was like, that's massive. And my mum died of a very sudden heart attack. So in my head, like, mm. I'm I'm doing good. <laughs> sweating. Sweating, sweating, and then cold, cold. Uh, yeah. 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 But then I think all of that I've came from that the Wim Hof thing because what that – I forgot it was a programme. It felt like there were some cameras following us around at points. But really, it was the experience of – eight other people in a tent which was incredible all these different personalities and I suppose that's that was the beginning of a journey for me of self-love because these people that I was with found me funny you know and, and my kids tell me not to laugh so loudly can you just laugh a bit quiet <laughs> so um you know I it was it was great that I, I had a, a sense of self-worth again, I suppose. It also made me realise on that job, job, trip, that basically I don't push myself. I sit in com comfort zones all the time. I don't push myself into, you know, I jumped in the ice. I was the first person in. I jumped, All of these things that I was doing and I was thinking, it's the power of these people cheering me on that's making me do it. So why can't I get myself or give myself the same cheerleading qualities that I give to others? Because I was also cheerleading them, but why can't I? And I suppose when I came back, it took a little while, but I realised that actually this isn't the end, like post-divorce, during menopause, it, this isn't the heading towards the end of my life. This is the beginning of the rest of it. And that's how I retrained my brain as well to go, oh, my God, if I can tie in all these things, having a younger partner was also partly to do with it because I, I, I don't think I'd felt any more kind of wanted in my life. By, and, and so my self-worth went up because I was doing this thing where I was doing all these extraordinary things that weren't just physical there was a lot of mental and emotional stuff as well and then tying it all in I also really do believe that my mum is watching over me and I believe uh, and, and going to the Dolomites and having that experience with Gabby where we were all doing the breathing thing and my mum came through and Gabby came to me and said your mum's here your mum's in she loves you so much I was like oh my god I've met Gabby two days yeah, so did you, before Gabby yeah. came up to tell you, you'd felt that anyway, and then Gabby, because that clip was extraordinary. felt like my mum was there, really yeah. extraordinary. And she did an interview afterwards, which obviously I'd never seen, because these were the, the after interviews, where she said, I don't, I don't know Tamsin's mum, I don't know what she looks like. I don't even know Tamsin at that point. It was, we were two days in. So when that happened, it felt like I was meant to be there. And in my head, of course, she would come through Gabby because Gabby was the most kind of open to me. Or it just it just was like, of course, that's my mum. Of course it is. That's not made up. That's not some coincidence. That... So I think that that, knowing that, has given me a sense of much. she's always with me, you know. And so that gave me an also a lot of self-worth. And a lot of things fell into place. Very weirdly, which I only remembered the other day, 
at New Year, I was at my place in the Cotswolds. The New Year before we went, before I said yes to Freeze the Fear. I'd been asked to do Freeze the Fear earlier on in the year and I didn't think I could make it work. And there were some issues that I thought, no, I can't go. And it was to be away for three weeks. And I thought, I can't just leave my kids in that situation. Their dad lives in America. I just couldn't make that work. And I said no. And then at New Year, I had a text message from Lisa Tarbuck. <clears throat> uh, I've met her a few times, but I don't have her phone number. She said, well, your security is good because it's taken me ages to get your number. And she'd had to get my number from somebody on Twitter who knew that they knew me. She'd direct messaged them. It took her something like six hours to get my number, she said. Uh, she sent me a very long text message, which I still have, along the lines of, I had a dream about you last night. And I just need to pass this on. You need to be available. You need to keep yourself available for this big thing that's going to happen, this job. You need to make sure you're available for this big job. It was something like that. I mean, every time I read it, I think I, I get shivers. And that is, was at is, Tarbuck, is she like spiritual or how? I don't know her very well. She's on the radio on Radio 2. I'm a massive fan of hers. So it was weird. Uh, she yeah. said she had a dream and she was on a dog walk and she needed to talk to me. Or she just basically sent me a message. And then literally a few days later, I, we, I was with the kids and I went, I decided to do a cold water experience in the um, Lake District. I said, come on, we're doing this. And we went on a cold water experience. But before we went, I called up my cousin, Daniel, who was the producer of freeze the fear and he'd phoned me originally because the bbc had wanted me to do it and i called my cousin up and i said dan guess what you did say to me when you offered me that you said to me tam um people pay a lot of money to do this to do this to be with wim hof he's really big at the moment and, and this was in november and he said and he said to me tam you're going to be paying to do it one day anyway i phoned him and i said guess what i'm doing i'm literally going up a a hill in the Lake District. I'm um, um, just paid a man to take us on a cold water experience, just like the Wim Hof. And he went, "You're joking." He said, "Someone's just come down with COVID, and they leave this week." Oh my god! Oh my god! That is so weird. All the elements lining up. And I said, "Oh, really? Maybe that's meant to." And then I then I thought about the Lisa Tarbuck thing. I think thought, "I wonder if that's that." And I feel like that came through my mum, maybe. Because on that free fear trip, that's the closest thing I've ever had happen of my mum being there. You know, and, and also that a massive turning point in my self-care because that's when I went, wow. I mean, yeah, loads of things aligned. And whether I, I'm not very religious, so I don't really, my mum was brought up Catholic and I was brought up Catholic, but then she lost her way, didn't stop believing. And so did I. And um, but she was very spiritual, really. And so I kind of feel like, yeah, it's all happened for a reason in a way. And also it sort of brings back a full circle to what you're actually now doing, which is exactly. how we started this podcast about giving all this back. And that's why you were meant to go on the journey. Like you've, it's, it's kind of given me tingles, but it's also that you, you're, I don't know, you're so contagious. It's made me go, oh, what's going to happen for me? <laughs> Let me just be a bit more open. Yeah. 